Assassin's Creed on your podcast, Balvin's Assassin's Creed. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode... Actually, do you know, I'm not sure where we're up to. Are we up to episode 113? 114? Yes. 113. I'm not more prepared than this. I've lost count because, unfortunately, I missed um, the last episode that Declan recorded with uh, Lord Raylis when he spoke about dinosaurs and Assassin's Creed. I'm really sorry that I missed that one, but it's good to be back. Um, so yeah, welcome to episode uh, 113. Um, this was one that we hadn't planned really until about four or five days ago. Um, we, we've changed our plans for the next few weeks because of the surprise release of the new content for Valhalla and the really big surprise release of the new content for Odyssey. And that's what we're talking about tonight. And um, we're going to kind of just do a review, share our opinions um, of the new story new map um, that was added to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, which was announced in the, the trailer last Tuesday. We're recording this on Sunday, the 19th of December. It will go out uh, Saturday. Actually, will it go out on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, Declan? What's your plans for publishing this one? Christmas Eve. I'm a bit, I have Christmas Day where I just want to drink Baileys on the, on the dressing ground and chill. <laughs> so... The idea is this will go out Christmas Eve and people will have it ready for Christmas Day when either A, we're preparing the turkey, or B, they're playing Christmas trivia with some sherry on a fire and they can listen to our voices serenading them. Perfect, mate. I like the sound Perfect of that. Perfect time. Absolutely. So yeah, enjoy this episode over Christmas. Um, of course, by the time you listen to it, it'll have been sort of 12, 13 days since the release of the new content. Um, but right now we're we're fresh off of um, the back of playing. Well, I am. Declan hasn't had a chance to play it yet, so we we need some help with this episode. Um, someone else who loves Odyssey, who has played through the new content and can share their thoughts and their opinions. So we have a new guest. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Sani, known as Sani Flame Art uh, and uh, a rather amazing artist. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, and uh, thank you very much for that compliment. Oh, no, it was an easy compliment to make. I have, and I haven't <laughs> shared it yet because I'm, I haven't yet had it printed. But in the new year, I shall have it printed. I have a fanta- two fantastic pieces of art uh, from Sani. One of Elise, which as anyone who listens to this show will know is required. And an amazing one of Arno, which I cannot wait to get printed um, and up on my wall because they are superb. Um, so definitely if you enjoy or if you like um, amazing character art, you should give uh, Sani's uh, work uh, a look. Um, yeah, Declan, get us started, mate. Where, where do we start with this uh, this new Odyssey content? Um, to be honest, I have find it hilarious that this has all been done last minute. But as I said in the release video, I've known about the crossover release for a little bit thanks to a sneak preview in the Mentals Guild. So, running a podcast, oh, yes, of course, of course, running this show where I may get sneak previews or early access or may not, depending on what you have to offer. And hiding it from you will start into the comp challenge because they're like, <laughs> let's let's do the Odyssey crossover. And I'm like, yeah, I knew you were going to say that already. I've been waiting. Eight, I've been waiting like <laughs> so I'll tell you what, before we get into the meat of, of the topic tonight, um, so I'm just going to read out the schedule that we have planned. So we had planned um, 18th of December, so yesterday's episode for Dinosaurs and Assassin's Creed, which went ahead as planned. We were going to do for Christmas um, uh, an Assassin's Creed Unity quiz, which I had done ages ago and prepared ages ago then we were going to record an episode just a sort of forward looking episode of what's going to happen what are we expecting what are we looking forward to um with assassin's creed in 2022 all of those plans were were kind of scrapped uh middle of last week but declan the super professional has been speaking to me for weeks we've had all the schedule planned he's not breathed a word that he's not even said you know what james we should probably leave a week free there and just uh, you know see what topic he has been absolutely if you need someone to act as your uh to keep your secrets <laughs> he's the right man for the job oh dear so here we are here we are um let, let's get let's sort of set the scene so i have finished yeah. um the odyssey story and all of the kind of locations on the new map declan you haven't started it because you don't have odyssey available at the moment no i i asked I've asked my friends at Ubisoft, but I wasn't able to acquire a sneak copy of Odyssey to try it, which is unfortunate, <laughs> but I have questions. A huge well, list of questions. Well, wonderful. <laughs> so, Sani, you have, like me, you've finished all of the content in, in Odyssey, I assume. 
I have. I have actually. There is um. What's the name of the quest? A kind of treasure hunt. I am very bad with yes. names, by the way. Yes. Um, I have one left to do, um, mainly just because I'm that type of gamer that when a game says just follow this clue will give you absolutely no pointers whatsoever, I go like, oh my god. <laughs> I like them, but I also hate them. Um, I know that feeling, and that I tell yes. you, just just to compare to Valhalla, where the world events give you even less pointers yes. than what you need to do, it has taken me a long time to adapt to yes. Valhalla's way of thinking. Yes, absolutely. I love the world quests in Valhalla just because they're quite diverse. But the fact that in a lot of them I had no clue <laughs> what I was meant to do. Um, yeah, that that was a bit, uh, you know, fun. But yes, but other than that, I have finished the uh, Odyssey crossover content in detail. All right. All right. So, Declan, you're okay with spoilers, I'm guessing, because you had a bit of a sneak preview. Um, the preview I got was the CGI trailer that everyone got released, uh, that I've got released in the team. So, I'm all right with spoilers because, I don't know, it's weird. Because it's a crossover, I don't mind knowing what I'm going in for, because playing the Valhalla first one, you already get a sense of the direction the Odyssey must have gone for why Cassandra's there and how she's ended up. So yeah. playing Valhalla first, I know where Cassandra's got to end up and the goal she's get going for. So it's now like a book where you know the ending, but you don't know the beginning and the middle. So spoilers are all good for me. All right. Okay. Excellent. So you said you had questions. Get us started. What's your first yeah. question? <laughs> um, the biggest hook for Odyssey for me was mythology because Greek mythology, Greek storytellers, and the idea of Cassandra and Rome as a mercenary fighting Greek monsters was cool. Now, judging by the trailer that I watched a billion times, it looks like this one is becoming more grounded to set Cassandra in the universe as more of a assassin slash I don't know what she would be so could you guys explain is it more grounded take on what, where Cassandra's life should lead not to the immortal or do they still try and dabble in fantasy eastern stuff what do you think Sammy um, I think East, there's still Isu-ness <laughs> there's still um, Isu stuff in the crossover um However, in terms of like the, the fantasy element, the mythological beasts, um, I haven't encountered any. I think in that sense, it's more grounded on um, the path Cassandra will take and how she comes to take it. Uh, but there is there is uh, some easiness there. Yeah. Without yeah. giving too much. <laughs> Oh, we can I'm, if you want. I'm, I'm going to go all in on spoilers. I think. Okay. Yeah. So, Cassandra starts Odyssey in on Kefalonia in her in her little hovel, um, and she's got this spear, her grandfather's spear, and it, in, it imbues her with certain abilities, which you know some may say are magical. Um, we as Assassin's Creed fans know that they are not magical; they are merely enhancements granted by advanced Isu technology and we can have a a, an entirely separate debate about whether Odyssey breaks the law of Assassin's Creed or not. Now what's important to think about is yes in the game you know from a gameplay point of view there are some abilities that are kind of super powerful or supernatural or whatever you want to call it but a lot of fun I'm just going to say that the gameplay in Odyssey is a lot of fun. Um, In the novel her abilities are more limited and if if you want to take the novel as the kind of canon source of information if i remember rightly and it's been a long time since i've read the novel it it effectively gives her a bit of a sixth sense the wrong word to use in the assassin's creed world kind of like an early warning you know that the hair is standing up on the back of her neck that something's about to happen um i can't remember what other abilities it gives her declan can you remember because you've you've read the book for for the podcast in the past i cannot know i kind of read it so long ago and since then i read about a thousand different books fair enough you read a lot yeah yeah <laughs> too much so, yeah 
in the game, you know, she she can do this ring of chaos ability and bull rush ability and Spartan yeah. kicking people off of cliffs. And I just I just want to say, being back in Odyssey and being back in that, the way that Odyssey's gameplay is designed, it's just so much fun. It's very satisfying. It yeah. is. Yeah. And I, I made this comment when uh, within sort of half an hour of being back, and I, I, I'm not saying this to bash Valhalla. Valhalla has a different style. It has a different tone. I get it. They wanted combat to feel different. I get that it's a different setup. So it's wrong to say that objectively one is worse than the other. So I'm just going to say subjectively, for me personally, I find Valhalla quite a frustrating game to play. Mm. Combat is quite slow. Parrying seems to have this weird delay, although that does appear to be resolved with some of the new changes. So I do want to make that point that, you know, um, dodging, you can dodge, but then you run out of, of stamina, so you can't dodge. And I get it. They're going for a different style. But for me personally, I loved Odyssey's melee combat of dodge, parry, attack, dodge. And it's fast and it's furious and it looks stylish. But most of all, mm. for me, it was responsive. You click the parry button. And she parries immediately. You get a little flash of sparks from the sword where it hits the enemy and you've, you've opened a, an opportunity to get a strike in. Um, and I just really missed those things. I really missed yeah. the responsive melee combat. The stealth works. Again, the stealth has been improved, in my opinion, a lot with the new update that came out uh, last week as well. Sorry, let, let me clarify. Stealth in Valhalla has been tricky since release but it does seem to be a lot better since release whereas odyssey stealth kind of worked all the time and i was stealth clearing locations on the island of corfu and everything worked mm. it was just so nice to be back and have everything work in a way that was mm. familiar to me um yeah. i kind of forgot on my point actually and where we were going with <laughs> your original question Declan. I've, I've gone off on a sidetrack already about uh, melee combat oh you asked if how grounded we were talking about how grounded it was so Cassandra starts with this this magical spear. Let's call it magical, even though it's not magical, it's advanced technology. And when Cassandra meets Layla in 2018, Layla brings her spear back to her and offers it to her. And Cassandra says something like, you can keep it, it's broken. So we know that at some point between the end of the Odyssey main game and the modern day, the spear has lost its power, lost its abilities, or it's been damaged or whatever, but we don't know how. Nope. This we story, now. we do, exactly. This story, I mean, you, you, you tell it, Sammy, how, what, what happens to the spear in this story? The spear stops working. Basically, all the, the special abilities that it, in the special sense it gives Cassandra, is actually gone. It's like the magic is gone. We know it's not magic. Um, like James say, is is advanced technology, but that is gone. Um, and it was gone after coming in contact with another very very powerful Isu artifact. Um, how we don't know technically, but uh, that caused uh, coming in contact with. I'll just say it was uh, Apple of Eden. Basically, it's a shiny mm. Isu ball. So Isu ball. It's shiny Isu ball. Yeah. Uh, it came in contact with it and it just created some kind of chain reaction which has completely disabled the the spear. So it becomes just a spear, a simple yeah. spear, nothing yeah. else. Now, I must admit, at that point, I first of all thought, this is cool from a yeah. let's, let's yeah. open up the story and require the players yeah. to play in a new way. But I mm -hmm. assumed... Nope. <laughs> that the rest of the story was going to be Cassandra repairing her spear. Like she yeah. would find the piece of Eden and use it to repair yeah. the spear. And, you know, I didn't think about the Layla ending and what, and, and how it would connect. But, That's of it, course, yeah. it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? How they so yeah, cleverly absolutely. filled in that story gap. Go on, Deccan. I'm kind of having an issue already with Odyssey's DLC. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I understand from a chemical story point of view that by the time it reaches Layla, the spear is gone. I believe it's broken. But after you spend so long, and even I, as a person who would do anything in a game for fun, got sick of finding the little animus fragments or whatever they were to repair the spear, it kind of feels like 
you spend hours and hours leveling that spear up to then suddenly be like, hey, your spear is now broken, it's only 60 hours you've put into our game to put the spear to its maximum level was wasted for a single story point just to tie an ending. It's, um, it's a what? silly complaint to have, in my opinion. Um, sorry, I don't know, James, if you want to answer. No, you go on, Sunny. Yeah, I'm interested yeah. to, to hear. I, I, think, I think the way they've done it is quite well done because at this stage in the story, Cassandra is tired of fighting. She is tired of weird Isu stuff. She wants a holiday, and that's that's how the the the, the, the DLC starts. She goes on a holiday to Corfu, um, and she just wants to lie in the sun and drink wine and not do anything. So so there is an element of Cassandra who does not want this life anymore. Um, and the other one is I do think she. She does look to get the spear repaired, but uh, uh, sorry, I'm gonna say this wrong. Alethea, Alethea, Alethea. I, I think that's know. right. Alethea. That's yes. how I've always. Alethea uh, seeks her out. Basically, we hear Alethea speak with Cassandra, and we see her as well. And Alethea just simply tells her that the spear cannot be repaired. Full stop. So. I think for Cassandra, hearing someone like Alethea say that nothing can be done, then nothing can be done. So she just accepts it. So so there is some logic to it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I never felt that what they were doing with the story and with the spear was inconsistent. Now, yeah, no. there's definitely a question about what order, when should you access this new content now? Yeah. There's two very, very big pop-ups. When you when so you sail or you travel to Sami, the the main town in Catalonia, the town where it all yeah. begins. When you uh, visit the, um, I can't remember the guy's name, the guy selling pots for Marcos, and you smash the pots. The very I first kind of remember. quest you do, yeah. So you go back to Sami, and there's a lady yeah. on the dock, you know, saying, "Would you like to travel to Corfu?" Like Sami said, it's you know, get your vacation. What's um, a holiday? <laughs> yeah, and. Um, so you you you've got this this side content which you can access very early in the game. All you yeah. need to do is finish Kefalonia and finish Megaris. Yeah. To be fair, you can kind of sprint through those two sections if you want in about three hours. Then you can access the side content yeah. for Corfu, this new crossover story. However, when you talk to the lady on the dock, you get this big pop up. This will spoil later content, and right. when you say yes. And you go to accept the quest. You get another big pop-up saying, are you really sure this will spoil <laughs> content? So what I think the advice is, and, and you do make a good point, Bethany, about how does this fit into the story. So you've got your main Odyssey family story in, in, Greek, in Greece, in the Greek world. You've got the Cult of Cosmos story where you're hunting down the cultists. You've got the story called the Between Two Worlds quest line, which you get from Pythagoras. And you hunt the mythical beasts, you seal Atlantis. Then you've got now Legacy of the First Blade is is optional here. Then you've got Fate of Atlantis. Now in Fate of Atlantis, right at the very end, um, there's a cutscene with Cassandra and Icarus. And Cassandra's looking out over Atlantis, and she says something like, "I'm tired, Icarus. People are always ask me to go here, do this, kill them. I'm tired." And I think if you play Fate of Atlantis and you get that scene, you finish Fate of Atlantis, and then you go into this scene, the, the narrative works. You've used your magical spear throughout your time in Greece, your time in, in Fate of Atlantis, Legacy of the First Blade as well if you play that, but it's not required for it to make narrative sense. You're tired. You go to, to Corfu. You get your rest that you've been looking for, and then your spear breaks. And then it's the end of the story. We should come to the ending, but maybe we save that for the end as well, because the ending is fantastic. Sammy, you wanted to make a point. Yes, yes. So I, I think I agree with what you say completely. And it just made me think that this is an issue, for example, I have with um, Siege of Paris and to some extent Wrath of the Druids and of Valhalla. Oh, yeah, go on. Um, which is, I know Ubisoft 
wants to make this content uh, accessible to as many people as possible, so they release it um, earlier in terms of game timeline. Um, and in my opinion, it doesn't work as well. It's playable, and certainly players who just play for fun might not uh, be bothered about it. But I think for those who enjoy the story and the lore and are looking for that continuity, then it doesn't make sense, which is what happened to Declan with this Odyssey uh, yeah. bit. Yeah. It doesn't make sense if it's not played at the end. Or at least it will raise some questions. Um, so yeah, so I think that is that is more of a I don't know a business strategy from Ubisoft to do that. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> oh, you make a good yeah. point, Declan. Mate, you wanted to say something. Um, just gonna say it, it's in here and here in the DLC and how the spear fits in. It kind of does sound pretty cool. Like at first glance, it's like, well, I'll just put eight hours into a game to fix the damn thing. No one's ever break, but if it fits in nicely with like the story and everything, it's if it fits it as well as he's as suggested, I am actually kinda happy with that interpretation, you know. Too easy to artifact come into contact with them will be like two magnets, so having polar effect and magnet to strike makes some sense, but I do wish they didn't break the spear so soon. Um before I ask the next question, James, you've kinda raised the biggest issue I have with Black Flat and um, not Black Flag. Odyssey. <laughs> hey, you want to talk about and... Black Flag? Sani's the right guest to have oh. on for that as well. <laughs> um, you raised another issue I have with Odyssey and Valhalla, mm. Mm. and it's DLC. Now, mm. I disagree, and I'm going record now, well, obviously, that Fate of Atlantis should not have tied into the main game and ended the main game, because I know a lot of content does end the main game story. And to hear that there's a line at the end of Fate of Atlantis DLC that kind of gives you a bit more a sense of why she's fed up, kind of brings that point where if people don't afford DLC or don't want DLC, then in Odyssey we're missing out on huge law that pushes the narrative for Valhalla, because we won't understand why Lady's got staff if we don't play DLCs. Very true, very true. And it also kind of like... I've not played Fate of Atlantis because I saw the PS4 before I could finish Fate of Atlantis. So I never got the sense that Cassandra was tired of fighting or tired of at least of crap from what I saw. So it's kind of an annoyance that if I played the um, DLC, the free content now, while ever playing Fate of Atlantis, I would not get a characterical sense that she's fed up of fighting, which is a huge disappointment because it's saying that they're line that everyone's gone and bought the DLCs. So I don't know how you feel, but to me it kind of feels like you're saying if you don't play the DLC you may not understand why she's now tired and wanting a holiday because at the end of the main game she doesn't look tired of fighting and anything. Hmm. There's not much Isu nonsense in the main game outside the Atlantis Project beasts. Mm. Mm. I mean you make a very good point. I can't defend the point because it this the point you've raised comes to the central issue of what is DLC? Should it even mm. exist? Should a game just yeah. have a story and it's a complete story as as the the writers intended? Whether it's a traditional beginning, middle, end, or you know, introduce the protagonist, the protagonist face a problem, the protagonist resolves the problem, you know, kind of story, or whether it's a trilogy of stories that are released over a number of years, I don't know. Um, so you're, what you're asking comes right to the core of of <laughs> What is DLC yeah. now? Yeah. The the answer to your question, Declan, is what we have with Valhalla, where we have two DLCs, kind of decent, very very decent sized expansions, but they can be accessed. I think once you've soon after you've visited, as soon as you've not as soon as you've arrived in Ravensthorpe, maybe when you've got to Ravensthorpe to level two, I think. I think or so. Yeah. Completed one arc. I think if I remember right, you have to have either completed Soma's arc in Grand Bridgeshire. Yeah, the first or thing. the the brothers, the Rag, is it the brothers of Ragnar? I can't even remember the names of all the arcs, but the other arc in, yeah, in Leatherchester. I don't know the name of the arc, but yeah, Leatherchester. Yeah, so you've got to have completed one arc, and then boom, Eivor gets some new yeah. guests, visitors yeah. in Ravensthorpe, and you can go mm. off to Frankia or off to Ireland. Mm. Um, so that's the trade-off. You've you've got DLCs in Valhalla that you can access very early on. 
and they give you stuff to do, but ultimately they don't progress Abel's character. Yeah. Or you can have Odyssey style, and I suppose Origin style DLCs. Although I don't remember Origins so well, maybe I won't talk about Origins. You can have um, Odyssey style DLCs where you cannot access them. Well, not correctly anyway. There are certain points in the story where you can access them, yeah. but they do advance the overall plot and the overall journey that Cassandra yeah. goes on. So that's the trade-off. Um, maybe if they were included in the base game and were just part of the story, part of the money that you paid the first time around, it would be less of an issue. Um, but you make a fair point. I still think that the the story... The standalone story on Corfu still works if you've not played Fate of Atlantis for a couple of reasons. It's not so much of a leap to say that Cassandra's fed up of her mm, Odyssey yeah. because we know I from agree. the novel, yeah, her Odyssey takes what is it, eleven years. Um, it's not a leap of of not faith. It's not a leap <laughs> of knowledge because Cassandra has already come into contact with pieces of Eden from the Between Two Worlds questline that she gets from her father Pythagoras. When she's killed the Minotaur, um, Steropes, yeah. um, what are the other ones? Medusa, and is it Argus, the other um, yeah. the other Cyclope? I think that's right. So she kills the four beasts. She obtains the piece of Eden. So from us as a gamer experiencing the story, Cassandra knows that these magical Isu balls exist, even if she doesn't fully understand them. Um, so I think it still works. Definitely for the full experience, it helps to have played Fate of Atlantis and to have been through that yeah. additional... Because it's that there's things that happen to Cassandra in that final simulation in Atlantis that are, you know, pulling at her emotional heartstrings, teaching her that as the keeper of the staff, um, she is going to see everyone around her die while she lives on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can understand how she would come out of that more knowledgeable but also maybe emotionally worn out and needing a break yeah um what did you think Definitely. sammy how, how would you have how do you think the crossover fitted into the rest of the content in odyssey i think it fits wonderful at the end that's that's the pretty much the only um criticism i would have that people can access it at any time um, I think there would be someone who has not played Fate of Atlantis. I think there would be a lot of questions like, who is Aletheia? What is this staff? What does the staff do? You know, what, 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 you know, why am I the keeper? What is a keeper? Um, I think it raises a lot of questions. It's still playable, and I know a lot of people who are more casual gamers. They don't really care much about the story and the lore they just want to shoot and kill and you know <laughs> do all the fun bits and for them it will be fine uh but for people who are maybe following the story they will have questions so i loved it i absolutely loved it but i do think it fits in perfect right at the end after fate of atlantis yeah yeah um, yeah I mean, the, the option there for players, and again, it's we're, we're recording this on a Sunday night, so it's about to come to an end, but they have made Odyssey free to mm. play for the weekend. Now, could you play the entire Odyssey story and the oh. DLCs in a weekend and then play the, the crossover mission? If you don't sleep. Yeah, maybe. if you don't, yeah, you're right, Sam. If you don't sleep, you could probably do it in 30 or 40 hours, I guess. I don't know what this is, the speed, ignoring speed runs, which are just insane. It, it's a big, big task. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah, yeah. So and you know, and the thing with the Sorry, thing Sam, with Odyssey is that you you'll need s uh, quite a lot of power for some of the like the Minotaur and the Medusa. You know, you can't go and at least <laughs> maybe it's just me and I'm a terrible gamer, but uh, I needed to be very overpowered on those fights. Oh, definitely. Um, they're not like easy fights, even on an easy setting. Um, so it's very difficult, I think, to do a speed run on Odyssey because of that, actually. Mm. Um, mm. I'm sure people who are better gamers than I can do it, but uh, I wouldn't be able to. No, same here. Yeah. yeah. One, one comment I would like to make, and I made a note of this um, in advance, is we didn't know, we, we, there'd been leaks that there was content coming to Valhalla. 
we spoke about yes. this when we did our, mm. our special episode last Tuesday night, that having new content for Odysseys, I have to say, we're nearly a week later and my mind is still kind of still um, reeling at the fact that we got this in a, in a three-year-old game. Now, I appreciate they were still adding content for a year, but it's basically been two years since there's been any yeah. major, new, well, more than two years since we've had any major new content. And we got this fantastic new story. Now, when they, when we saw the trailer, my, my thought, I didn't quite connect that it was a new map and a new location. I kind of assumed they would take us somewhere in Greece, maybe somewhere warm and sunny, one of the islands, um, and it would be a new story, but in one of the existing yeah. locations. But they didn't. Yeah. They went to the trouble of creating a new map, a new island. And what I really appreciated about Corfu was it felt unique. They could have just copied and pasted Naxos, Paros, Crete, Kythera, any of the other islands and just said, boom, that's cool. But they didn't. They they took, for me, it felt a little bit like uh, Lacania. We had sort of the more of the, the, the trees and the vegetation of uh, Megaris. Um, and it felt like its own unique biome and its own unique location. Did you notice, Sani, they also tweaked the weather so it never rained the whole time we were there? Yes, Whereas in yes. the rest of Greece, yes, you don't get much rain, but every now and then you will get an epic storm and clouds and lightning. The weather in obviously is amazing. That's anyway, right. but we never did. You know, they, I, I, would, I, I'd only been, I've been playing for maybe an hour, maybe even two hours, and I suddenly thought, hang on a minute, the skies are always blue. Yeah. Is, did you also notice there are? No I did ships. indeed. Yes. Yeah. There's also no ships fighting nope. at sea. They made nope. it peaceful. more peaceful. It's a holiday yes. destination, isn't it? But they. I, I, I was blown away at the the effort they must have gone to um, to take. Now, they're not creating entirely new content because it's the same buildings and ropes and rocks and trees, but they took the trouble to create this little bubble of Greece that was unique and it felt really special. Sammy, please, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, uh, just on that, I wanted to say that I actually was so happy when I found out that there would be a Odyssey new content because you mentioned leaks and unfortunately i was leaked to this um not to what the crossover involved but the fact that cassandra would show up um i was spoiled on that many many um months ago um i have very very strong opinions about leaks and data mining which i probably shouldn't go into because i might swear and i'm sure declan will then never invite me back um, <laughs> we allow swearing don't worry about it <laughs> uh but yes i have very 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 strong feelings on that so i was very annoyed with all that so when the announcement came i was like excited but like yeah i know this so the fact that there was a extra odyssey quest it was awesome because I did not know that. I just thought it would be Cassandra would show up in Valhalla full stop. Uh, so I was yeah. super happy. And when I logged into Odyssey and when I saw there's a whole new map and there's, there's all these new locations. Um, and like you say, the locations are not necessarily new. But for, for me, they feel new because, yeah, assets are similar, but it's a, it's a different place altogether. So for me, it was very, very exciting um, to see that. And that, that mm. was my surprise. It was mm. the Odyssey part. Um, that was what made me excited, I have to say, on this. I, I felt the same buzz that I'd first felt, what was it, two and a half years ago when I first played Odyssey and it yeah. was all new to yeah. me. And, which do, yeah. do you remember? Where, I mean, it's the same in Valhalla and, and, and in Origins. When you get to a new region and you get that banner that yeah. says, you know, Megaris or yeah. Focus, and you just think, yeah. ooh, new possibilities. You go to a sync Beautiful, point for the first it? time yeah. and you see the yeah. map layout and you think, oh, I don't know. I've played Odyssey so much. There's bumps all over, locations. like, yay. You, I yeah. did. I had that yeah. whole new gamer thing, but also it was yeah. familiar because it was my, my beautiful world that I've spent hundreds yeah. of hours and it was just, it was fantastic. But the, yeah. the the joy of exploration in a new area yeah. was just wonderful. Declan, please, mate, you wanted to say something. Is it making me really want to go buy Odyssey now just for this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will admit, though, and I'm really sorry to say this on the show, but I was not excited for Cassandra and Valhalla. I still have okay. a, a bad yeah. taste just because 
with a lot of the data miners and mm, doing stuff, yeah. somebody leaked Sandra coming to um, Valhalla. And now, normally, yeah. I would ignore that mm. and it wouldn't bother us. But what happened is I saw an IGN article, which I've mm. talked about before in the Discords, saying that Cassandra, at the time of Siege Paris, um, Cassandra's back in Valhalla. So I read the IGN article because I trusted it. And it was basically the entire spoiler walkthrough yeah. Yeah. of... Oh, as far back as the release of... So was that August yes. time? And it literally spoiled the entire assassin yeah. history of Siege of Paris. It, yeah. Just for the article oh at the God. bottom to say yeah. Cassandra's not in Valhalla. The whole article <laughs> didn't have... I didn't see the spoiler one, so I read the whole article, sped through it, and it spoiled the whole... Assassin Bureau locations, what the mission bad. is. Oh, just, just for the article to say at the very bottom of one line, Cassandra is not in Valhalla. And I was just like, and then when there's like, oh yeah, Assassin's Creed's uh, crossover, Valhalla, I was like, yes, it's Cass. I love Cassandra. You know, she was the first female Thomas I played because I loved her story in the novel. But having one of the coolest parts of Siege Paris gone because of data miners and Clicked yeah. it for mm. a, I don't think I was as excited to see her here. Not because she's a bad character or I don't like mm. the idea. Just I'm mm. still upset that I didn't get to do the mystery of what the assassin bureaus are yeah. because of data miners. Gotcha. Yeah. But gotcha. I, I have similar feelings because, and to be honest, at some point I was like, you know what? I wish she's not back so we can shut up everyone. Yes. Just because the whole thing annoyed me so much, and and um, like I said, uh, I, it really, it's a really, really thing that gets me a bit enraged, and not a lot does. Uh, the data mining and the leaks, and the fact that everyone was doing it, it's become so normalized. Mm. Um, and for me, it it ruins the pleasure and in some ways it 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 how shall i say it it, it damages the car the characters for me um yeah. i still yeah. love cassandra of course but I, I i i didn't have the impact with this crossover that i know i would have if that um trailer was the first thing i uh, was the first time i i'd heard of it sorry i'm mm. waffling on now but um but I have similar feelings. I got to a stage where I kind of wish that it would not happen. Um, and Odyssey is what is in my top three games for AC. So I love Cassandra. So it's not something I would normally say. But it got to that stage where I was so enraged by all this um, data mining and leaking and things that that I kind of, yeah... Yeah, I wasn't happy. <laughs> I feel your pain, totally. Um, oh, I, God, yeah. The first leaks came out nine months ago. I months and months, now. yeah, yeah. And at the time I thought, nah, this this one or two people who are leaking the stuff, are, they're, they're, they've misinterpreted something or they're barking up mm. the wrong tree or whatever. And mm. as, as more and more pieces of evidence gathered, and I, I don't seek these leaks out, but you subscribe to YouTube channels, you, you read your Twitter feed and, you can't avoid it, unfortunately. No, you, no. You, you can't avoid that headline. Yes, you don't need to click on the video or you don't need to click on the tweet or the That's news article right. like Declan found, but you still see the headline. Yeah. And the thing is, 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 it's everywhere. It's on YouTube. It's on Twitter. It, yep. it, it, yep. And the thing is, what I found was that even people I know that were liking posts about it, so... I started muting a lot of accounts and unfollowing, but I was still being exposed to it. It was like there was no escape. It even went to um, a, a Discord server I'm on that never had stuff like that. And it was there as well. And it was basically everywhere. And I honestly don't understand why someone would want to find out such amazing news via, you know, Mr. McGamer Boy leak a mining guy <laughs> on Twitter with a sad post saying, hey, Cassandra, you know, click here. Instead of seeing that trailer for the first time and being absolutely awed by it. But yeah. 
Yeah. But yeah, it's what it is, I suppose. I've been told not to fight it because it's the way of the world. So I suppose well, I'm getting old. I, <laughs> I don't like I, it. I tell you, it, it's made me a lot more cautious about what I click on. Mm. I don't mean that yeah. on like an internet safety point of view. There's certain things you obviously yeah. don't click on, but mm-hmm. you know you, you do have to be. I, I don't want spoilers. I would like to have seen mm-hmm. that reveal trailer completely yeah. fresh. Now I'd Absolutely. already seen the rumors about Cassandra in Valhalla, so that part of the trailer was still cool to see, but it was like okay. Yeah. Where I don't know whether it, Ubisoft planned it because they knew stuff was leaking, or whether it was just lucky chance. Where it blew my mind was. Oh my God! We are going back to Greece. Greece That's is right. Not yeah, just a story it's not just in Alhalla. England or Scotland. Yeah, this is they have had, and and either either the data miners were looking in the wrong direction, or maybe Ubisoft simply didn't release any code. I assume they didn't do any releases. That must yeah. be the case because there hasn't been an Odyssey patch since. Well, we had the sixty frames per second patch for console, but that was some months ago. But Maybe Ubisoft knew what was going to happen, so to try and keep the surprise, they they yeah. didn't, or maybe it was just again lucky because they weren't being released anyway. I wonder yeah. if this will change Ubisoft's future release strategy, whether they will try I hope to so, keep. I, don't want I to do spoil. too. I do too. I, I I kind of appreciate the nerdiness of digging into files no. and digging into code, but not for this purpose no, because I don't want spoilers. No. Um, right. But I still had that that buzz of seeing that trailer and seeing yeah oh my god we've got herodotus and ranabas our, our boat dads as uh, rue called them our boat dads are back yeah you know yeah. and it was just amazing and it yeah although we'd had the data mines it didn't spoil the oh, yeah. greek content for me the greek and it content, didn't take the pleasure away though, no from playing, no it didn't but that it didn't. didn't yeah it didn't. On the Valhalla side, yeah, a little. Some of the some of the shine was tarnished. Let's put it like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, Declan, over to you. Um, I just want to say on the quick point we didn't rule for ask a very important combat question about the DLC. Um, I have spoke a lot of this with some of the mental skill people and their thoughts, and it looks like the reason for the data miners um, not getting Odyssey is because. The co- the dialogue code for the um, crossover of Valhalla it's been there for a few months. Uh, I think someone said. Yes. It looks like that no one's bothered with Odyssey because it hasn't been updated. So I okay. believe. Yeah, that makes sense. I believe the code's probably been there since the last sixty frames second update, ready to be unlocked. But, and this is just a hypothesis of my own, and I did. I think it was six piece or something mentioned about like. Um, some people may be bored of Valhalla without looking to see what's coming next. But maybe it's just a byproduct of a live service game, you know. People are always like, oh, this is live service, let's see what's coming next, let's see what's coming next. And because Odyssey ended its live service content yeah. a year ago, yeah. no one's it's possible. bothered. Yeah, so no Makes one's like, sense. oh, let's see if we bring anything. But with Valhalla, it's like, you've got your gear 2 coming. People are going to mm. be digging for months to mm. see what gear yeah. 2's bringing. So, yeah. live service will always bring data miners because, in my opinion, you need to know what you're going to do next. It yeah. will, yeah, you're right, it will, unless Ubisoft do sort of overhaul their release strategy so that they are releasing the new content as downloads a few days or a week before it becomes playable. Yeah. You know, what we know from, from Valhalla is they, they released, as you said, the audio files for the new quest. They've been in the game on people's PCs and consoles for months, and that's allowed the yeah. miners a chance to, to crack it open. I hope, yeah. very much hope, that they, that Ubisoft make it more difficult yeah, for them to same. crack it open. Absolutely. Um, but I tell you what, let's let's go back. Instead of talking about the uh, the the surrounding news, let's go back to the content yeah. itself. So yeah, um, mm-hmm. let me let me go to my notes. So it was as I, I will say. It was really nice to be back. It was good. like it's like putting on a, a nice, comfortable pair of shoes. Everything Absolutely. was familiar. Everything worked. Yeah. yeah, everything worked. Greece is beautiful. Corfu. They created a beautiful island. Um, I, I've already said that. I, what I really appreciated was um, the fact they created a new island with a unique um, yeah. feel and a unique kind of biome. Uh, what about the story itself? Very, very simple. I think it's five memories, um, probably about two hours if you if you just play it straight through. Possibly, but we yeah. got some really good um, interactions between Cassandra and Herodotus and Varnabas. 
Um, we got Peace of Eden, which was great to see in the, in the story. What I really liked about Spear, though, and the Spear breaking, or, or, or yeah, breaking halfway through, and you get that pop up which says, I forget, it. I'm, I've already forgotten the wording, Sammy. You might remember. Yeah, it says I your abilities are disabled <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. And as I said earlier, I thought, okay, this is going to be a quest to res- repair the spear or repair, you know, get the abilities back. Not having the abilities forces you to play, let's put it in quotes, like an assassin. Um, you can't just, you can, depends on your build, but you have to think more. And I don't know whether this was a intentional or whether it was strictly for the story to, to bridge us between the working spear and the spear being broken in the modern day. But I like to think that maybe it was a bit of a nod to those players who didn't like Odyssey's magical gameplay and Cassandra's magical abilities. Because suddenly, yeah, you've just got to you've got to think and you've got to use stealth and you've got to be cautious about how you approach each location and each part of the story. Um, what I really wanted to call out though is I think there was a lot of time and effort put into the not just the map design, but if we if we zoom in on the map to the individual locations and towns, I guess you'd call that level design. Yeah. This felt really crafted. Like the people that have designed each level had put, and I, again, I don't want to criticise the people that, that, that created the original version of Odyssey too much. That seems unfair. But these locations felt like they had a lot more thought in terms of hiding spots, ropes, ladders, parkour opportunities stealth opportunities yeah. than we had in the base game so I, I f- my my feeling was that i came away from corfu thinking that if you didn't particularly if you played odyssey because it was the latest game and you wanted to play it but you didn't like the combat that w- w- the quote unquote magical combat or you wanted a game that offered more stealth opportunities play this story because the, the central part of the story, the spear breaking, takes your abilities away anyway. But these locations have been really well thought out to encourage mm. stealth, to encourage assassinations. Um, I appreciated that. I, I played this a lot more as an assassin, and it was very, very satisfying. Um, what did you think, Sammy? Did you, did you play it as an assassin? Did you kind of melee your way, YOLO your way through the map? Uh, I did. I went with the stealth approach and the reason why uh, was uh, earlier on you were talking, it's funny, you were talking about uh, the combat and you compared the combat of Odyssey being more responsible with Valhalla. Mm. And um, I thought it was quite interesting how um, I'm actually the opposite. So I do like the odyssey combat but for Mm. me the odyssey combat is fun because of the abilities okay i rarely do melee on odyssey i use abilities and i use the bow that's it um not that it's not good because for me that it's not a question of being good or not for me i i I gain all the pleasure from using the abilities because i think they're amazing yeah so would you be someone that would be using like rush rush assassination something like that to to yes, stab people definitely. and chain the kills together definitely and stuff? gotcha yeah, gotcha definitely. um so and it was interesting when um the spear lost its power i swore to myself i was like oh no <laughs> what am i gonna do now because i do use abilities a lot and the thing is, I am not good at melee combat because I never use it. Um, but of course, it wasn't a problem. I went the assassin approach, like you say. It's mm. the ideal environment for you to go the assassin way. So lots of hiding, lots of whistling, lots of just sneaking past. Yep. Um, and yep. if I got in trouble, I just took my bow out. <laughs> um, so I think I think it's a good... It's a good nod to that as you say um and uh yeah it forces you to go down that route and find out that it's actually quite pleasurable mm. uh, to mm. do things stealthy it's, it's a comment i'll make mm-hmm. and, and definitely and i have discussed about doing a, like an odyssey revisit 
deep dive with Ever in, in the next few months, but something I'll just very briefly say now. Odyssey is criticised a lot for not having good stealth or not being very stealthy. And oh, I, don't I never that. felt that. I mean, as a new player, <laughs> I've never played one of these games before. Yes, yeah. I get, you know, everyone knows I'm a massive Unity nerd. Of course, Unity, lots of stealth options. Totally different game to, to Origins and Odyssey. Yeah. I never felt that Odyssey wasn't a stealth game because me, it's very hard nothing, to compare games like that. It is, it is. But I remember going through, um, you remember in Cephalonia, uh, Kleptus Bay, the location where the Cyclops is, where he's drowning yeah. uh, Valnavas in, in the big uh, pot yes. of water. And he, he put the, the eyeball up, up the goat's butt. I remember doing that mm. village multiple times and I died a lot of times because I was new. I'd never done yeah. one of these games before. But I did it stealthily in the yeah, bushes. It was very easy to roof. do stealth. Yeah. yeah. So I never, I, I get that maybe people were saying, you know, I want smoke bombs, I want cherry bombs, or I want. They wanted specific elements, I think. Maybe so. so. Uh, maybe it's so. a bit like comparing apples to bananas, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the stealth in Unity, I would assume, is also different from the stealth in. Uh, Assassin's Creed 2 or Revelations and it's different from Odyssey I think it's you can compare it of course but it's not a straight comparison at least in my opinion yeah yeah so I I, I played Odyssey as a stealth player at least early on when my same because I, I wasn't very good at I died a lot you Sani yeah <laughs> so I, I never got the criticism that it wasn't a stealth no. game but if, if you were someone who went into Odyssey and didn't like it because the abilities, because of the perhaps because yeah. the level design didn't encourage stealth. Again, coming back to my point, this new map, these new locations, they are designed for that. I would say, Declan. Yeah. So, I'm kind of worried now about playing DLC. <laughs> oh, why? Why? <laughs> Just on the basis of um, a quick quick tangent quote. If you can play a game by hiding in the bushes, you can play a game stealthily. It's not that hard. You can do it. But I built an assassin character in Odyssey. I got my melee damage 2,000, but my assassin build damage to 3,500. So I always, you know, use rush assassination, critical assassination. I could assassinate entire camps, one hit wonders with a spear and yeah. Yeah. I'm a badass. But... There is no passive tree in the Odyssey. It's all ability build trees. What do you mean by passive tree? In Origins and Valhalla, you've got the skill tree where there's nothing that ties to the abilities. It's just all passive stuff. So you've got like um, a raven moved in Valhalla. So when you shoot someone with a bow, the raven goes and picks stuff up. Yeah. Uh, extra adrenaline. And I remember in one of the Assassin's Trees in Odyssey, there's critical hit. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. So my yes. curiosity is one, rush assassination was one of my favorite abilities. Not because it was cool as hell to look at, but it made sense to launch a spear and then run after it. That mm. shows the skill of a mercenary to launch a spear halfway across a map and chase after it. Yeah. Um. So I'm worried about that. And two, when with the, one of the DLCs, you could destroy, um, when you kill someone with stealth, you got rid of the body, you like to see the body. Oh, yes. I mean, that, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love that one. And three, <laughs> the other ability was a passive, is critical hit. If the abilities are being removed, how can we give people the critical hit chance? Right. Oh, we're going to... That's gonna, my right. worry. So, the other two things that this new story gives us, they give us two it gives us two new legendary weapons, each of which comes with a unique and new legendary engraving. Now again, we're sort of heading into the types of players that like this kind of character build stuff, and there are players that don't. So if you don't like this sort of character build stuff in Odyssey, this is not going to help you. However, try try and hear me out for a minute. So, you know, in Odyssey, it's all about the numbers. You can build for assassin. You can one hit um, merc level 99 mercenaries on Nightmare if you build for it. You can deal 200,000 melee damage with a light attack if you build yeah. for it, and so on and so on. Yeah. There is totally reasonable argument from some players that will say, this is Assassin's Creed. I shouldn't have to build for it. I get that argument. 
I don't really have an answer for you other than to say mm. if you want to master Odyssey, you have to build for it, you have to accept it. So yeah. if we move move beyond that point, um this this new story gives us two new legendary weapons. I can't remember the names. One is a bow and one is a set of daggers. Um, the bow comes with the, the legendary engraving. I forget the exact numbers, but it's something like boost headshot damage by 200%, but then it, it does drop your melee and assassin damage by, I think, 100%. So you lose a lot of your melee and assassin damage, but you get a massive buff on your headshot damage. The daggers come with a new legendary engraving, which, again, I think this is a nod to... This is partly to help players out who suddenly lost all their abilities, but I think I, I treat it also as a nod to those players who don't want to use magical abilities anyway and want to treat it as a as a strictly non-magical um, game. The daggers, the, the dagger engraving is something like like an assassination will always kill the target. Now there is a downside, but I can't remember what it is, and it doesn't really matter. So. When you loot those two pieces of gear as part of exploring the map, you can go to the blacksmiths on, on the town, Korkira, I think it is. You can engrave, for example, the assassin engraving on one of your pieces of items or just equip the daggers, and you will be able to assassinate every single person on that island. What I would say is there are no mercenaries on the island. There are no legendary beasts. You know, it's a peaceful place. There are a couple of bandit camps, but... So if you if you use the engravings the new story gives you or the new map gives you, you can play it as like Sani said, she plays I think you're the same deck and you play a lot of ranged combat. So you can engrave the, the headshot engraving and you'll be headshotting people at a hundred paces and you'll be killing them with one hit. Or you can use the daggers and, and play assassin. Um I so agree, yeah. yes, the game is taking your abilities away, and you you could still build for critical assassinate and all the rest of it, but it's giving you these new engravings that restore some of the, the damage output that you lost when you lost your ability to do critical hits. So that's how they're balancing it. I'll be honest, I'm I'm a level 99 player. My current game is, Same. I think it's four, three or four new game pluses. No, it might be four or five new game pluses chained together. I, yeah. I don't need those abilities because I've got a yeah. heavily customized build and I can one-shot assassinate mercenary anyway. But if you're not there, if you're starting the game as at sort of level 20 or level 30, use these engravings. They will help you um, overcome what you've lost um, through through losing the abilities through the Spear of Leonidas. I will make one more point, which is something that I sometimes see on the Odyssey subreddit. Um, we sometimes get people complaining that Odyssey is very grindy. It's taking me 100 hits to kill this mercenary. And you'll see people answering in, in the thread trying to offer help with, with combat or whatever. And what you'll find is this this person is playing a new game. They're new to the game and they're playing a nightmare. And they've got the level scaling set to the hardest level. Um, if you're not enjoying it taking 100 hits, make it easy. Set the level scaling to normal, Absolutely. level scaling to light. It makes no sense. Set, <laughs> exactly. I, I, I mean, I love Odyssey, but I don't want to spend 10 minutes gradually no. chipping away at a mercenary. I self. hate that. <laughs> yeah. I played my first way through, all the way through the game and the DLCs on easy, with the level scaling set to light, yeah. and it was hard enough for me. Um, yep. I then yeah, went back is. and I yeah. then I bumped up the difficulty, but you know, so that that I would say if you're if you're playing this new story and you've lost your abilities and you're finding it difficult, check your difficulty level, check yeah, your level absolutely. scaling level, make it easy on yourself. What, what's the point? Yeah. Enjoy the story. Nothing wrong with yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hopefully, I've answered your uh, your point about um, losing the abilities, Declan. What do you think from what you've heard? Um, I want to end the recording and go play this DLC because <laughs> I I heard daggers, I heard the daggers' <laughs> abilities, and I thought I would, and I, and I don't mind because I played the game already. I would get it on my Xbox because it'd be a brand new save. Mm -hmm. I don't have any access of cross saving at Valhalla. I would oh, just do the DLC. Yeah. Just to get the daggers, just to get the engraving, just so I could get the entire map of Odyssey with that dagger engraving and that bow engraving. Because Do you know, I've just had a thought. I don't know if those engravings work outside of Corfu. You need to test it for me, because if they do, I, I will test will it for you. And I tell you what, when you do get Odyssey on your Xbox, I want you to stream it, and I'm gonna watch the stream, and we're gonna sort of do a, like a buddy up. We're gonna we're gonna talk you through it and help you out with your builds. It's gonna be great. 
to be honest, my builds for it, um, before I got to the last comment I've got written down, I always build what I call a legacy assassin build. Okay. And every assassin in Assassin's Creed always has a ranged ability and an assassin ability. No other assassin does it. You know, LDA's range is throwing knives. Ezio's a gun thingy in his bracer, which I still makes no sense. Connor's a bow. <laughs> Why does it make... Oh, sorry, I've got, to, I've got to stop you there, mate. Why does it make no sense that he's got a little gun on his bracer? Because looking at the time period and everything, the material needed would be like cast irons that probably weigh a little bit. Gunpowder mm. ratio between bullet and velocity. Then you've got to have padding into the bracer because of the recoil to make sure that it doesn't... That a gun has kick backwards, but I'm pretty sure the bracer would ha- absorb it downwards and snap your wrist. Then you've got to be careful that it's on top of a mechanism to release a blade, which is usually dagger thin, so you've got to make sure that ah, I see. when you yeah. shoot it, you don't shatter the blade at the same time. So, so is the pistol on the inside of his wrist then, where the blade is? I thought the pistol yeah. was on the outside. Ah, uh, okay. It's on. Uh, I think it's just on top of the blade. Um, because he whenever he holds it, he always holds it as if he's pointing his hidden blade. So it's always on the uh, underneath of his arm. Okay. But okay, that's gameplay plus fiction. <laughs> but <laughs> either way, my point is, I always go for range assassination because every assassin does range. If you if you can find an assassin that has no range gear, then I will revoke and comment. But every assassin has a range gear, even. Edward, not Edward, the Fry Twins have throwing knives, I believe. Throwing knives, yep. yep. So everybody does, yeah. everyone does rain, so I can't cast. You know, good bow. Actually, the Fry Twins guns. have throwing knives and pistols, although they, yeah, quick shot won't kill anyone. Like the knives, really, but the headshot does. So, yeah. See? Yeah. So that's the build I'm going to go for, so I really want one to say. All right. So let me, I will let you know if these new engravings work off the island or whether they're somehow restricted to the island. So, the final question I've got written down, I'm going to ask Sally first and you, James. Overall, judging how the reaction to our Odyssey has always been, how does Cassandra fit into the law? Because, you know, <laughs> that I don't have any complaints in it, but I don't want to know too much about the Hidden Blade, so I want to keep that surprise. But how does it feel, you know, given that Cassandra now an extra story after the deal after the main campaign and the DLCs. Does it feel that this is where Cassandra belongs and it's her rightful place now in the law moving forward as an eternal guardian? Or does it feel a bit like there's more room to grow Cassandra's character into the law? Um I mean I have no complaints as well. I, I think Cassandra fits into the lore very, very well. Um I don't share the opinion of <laughs> people who have issues with it um, I can't comment much on it in that aspect uh, in terms of room to grow I think there's always room to grow for Cassandra if we if we take into consideration who she is and the role she at, she has um, and you know the reason why she is immortal um well not quite immortal but the reason why she 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 lives for so long the fact that she's the keeper of the staff and why is she the keeper of the staff um so i think she found her spot quite nicely i think for her to to have this task that she was uh, given um I think it fits perfect with the lore. It fits perfect with uh, Valhalla. So I haven't played the Valhalla bit yet, but it fits in with what we know from Valhalla, the ending of Valhalla, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, so I have no complaints. So I'm sure someone who, who doesn't think she fits into the lore probably would have more to say, but I... I think she has a place in this franchise and it's a very good place and yeah. um, I am very happy about it. Yeah. If that if that makes sense, that comment, I don't know if I um, answered 
the question. That well. that makes a lot. Of, that does make a lot of sense. Oh, Sorry for interrupting okay. you there. I think the I think the hardest one is I'm trying to word it because for me, for me, if a game has Isu Templars or assassins, and even if it has no assassins, no Templars, and a ton of Isu, will always be in an NAC game. Yes, so absolutely. I'm, I'm struggling to word things that incorporate all types of fan bases because I do understand and I do agree that everyone gets into the games differently. Everyone sees an anchor point. Mm. I see, you know, three pyramids, three pillars of the Assassin's Creed universe, Isu, Temple, and Assassins. If a game has no if no Isu, no Assassin or Temple, so no, it's not an Assassin's Creed game. If mm. the game has mm. a mercenary with a ton of Isu, game, Isu lore, it's an Assassin's Creed game. Absolutely. You can argue, but if it wasn't Absolutely. for the if it wasn't for the EC, humans wouldn't exist. So technically, Absolutely. if we got realistic on a tangent, the you take out EC, you have no Assassin's Creed yeah. game completely. Oh, of course not. Of course not. That's what it's all about. It's about the artifacts that these people created, um, and you know, you also make a, a fine point for me. AC is not just bad assassin. No. Good assassin killed bad Templar. For me, that is such a restrictive view. Absolutely. And I completely understand that people might have a preference to play like that, the classic, you know, revenge against because you killed my family, you know, whatever. Um, but so there is a preference issue there, but it doesn't mean that other games uh, that are not as... as uh, <laughs> Sorry, not offend, not meaning to offend anyone, but as simple as that, are not in the universe. The universe is vast. You no, know, you would you wouldn't say that about other uh, franchises. So, so I agree with you. There's there wouldn't be uh, assassins without Isu at all. Yeah. Sorry, James. Go on. No, don't don't apologize. <laughs> you, you, you you carry on. Um, I have some thoughts on on um, Declan's question, but I'll I'll wait for you to finish, Sammy. Of course. No, no, I th- I think that's it. I think that 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 um, is the thing that I uh, hear a lot. You know, the what is an Assassin Creed game, and it doesn't hmm. have Assassin versus Templar. And I, I yes. you know, not be not meaning to be disrespectful. I do a lot of eye rolling because yeah. I personally find it restrictive. If it was just that, I. I would still play the games, but I wouldn't want to be involved in the fandom, probably, or I wouldn't want to know more about the lore because it's it's you know it's story it's it's like always watching the same troupe on movies. It it gets boring, you know. You need a variety of uh, different elements and different perspectives. Um, and I personally love outside perspectives because I'm an outsider. I wouldn't be a Templar and I'm not an assassin. Um, so playing an outsider gives me a hint on what it would be to live in this world of assassins versus Templars and Isus. And yeah, so that's it. Sorry, I waffled on there. No, it's okay. I'm going to take the word you said there, variety, um, and, and sort of talk from that point of view. So. Yeah. You make a great point, and again, I, I'm still new to this franchise relatively, but you know, it, it's kind of a trope in in conversations with fans and in news articles mm. that are reviewing the franchise that the franchise was becoming stale. Um, the yeah. games were see, now I, I never yeah. felt the games were repetitive. I enjoyed Syndicate because it was unique compared to Unity, yeah. compared to AC Four, AC Three, yeah. blah blah blah. I feel like the Ezio trilogy are kind of like. I mean, they, they're closely released. They, they obviously they, they evolve each one, but they feel like one long game that you just play back to back rather than yeah. three separate games. But even then, yeah. I enjoyed them all for their unique um, parts as well. So I, I never felt that it was getting stale, but some people did. Origins turned the franchise on its head with this open world, yeah. with these sort of very light, but they were there. They were RPG mechanics. They obviously went heavily into it. Odyssey shook yeah. things up a lot. So Odyssey certainly gave variety and Odyssey tells the story of an outsider. I'm not going to spoil dialogue in Valhalla, but I, I'll, so I want to make a few points and I want to come to Declan's point about does this crossover sort of help, does it help Cassandra fit into the universe? This crossover on its own does, but it's built on 
be the conversation between Eivor and Cassandra in the Valhalla half of the crossover, which we won't go into here because I don't want to spoil it because I know Declan is... Ooh, exciting! Yeah, and you know, it's not, it's not I huge, <laughs> but it's... Yeah, exactly, so no spoilers, but it's there and it makes it very clear who Cassandra is and what she's doing. So if I just talk about what we see in Odyssey, so... Although I love Odyssey, I am also clear it is not without its flaws. Mm. Now, I get that in these kind of open world games, you can't to, to, to finish the story and then shut the game down and roll the credits and say, ha ha, player, you're done, is a bit cruel because there's always more to do. So I, I understand why these open world games end as they do. And in Odyssey, you get a cut scene on the beach with uh, with Herodotus and Vanadas, and they say this has been an Odyssey we'll always remember. And then you're still in the open world, or Layla if you're in the Animus to, to frame it properly. So you you don't, and you get the dinner in Sparta scene, and depending on who you saved or didn't save, none of those endings, from a storytelling point of view, for me they they were weak. They they could have hit more more of an emotional closure to, to Cassandra's journey and to the story of Odyssey. Like I say, I get why they were constructed how they were from a gameplay point of view, but perhaps they could have been stronger. This crossover story, this Corfu story, it sets Cassandra's task ahead as the one, and this is Alethea sort of helping Cassandra understand her duty for the coming hundreds or thousands of years it sets her role as finding and either making safe or destroying these pieces of eden these artifacts so cassandra's role is set very clearly there by alethea and that fits in very well with with the the established law we know there are these artifacts we know the templars want them and we know the assassins will act to to keep them from templar hands what we now have is we have a third person, and who knows, there may be others in the future who are not aligned to either organisation, or not not directly working for either organisation, but are seeking them for themselves. Cassandra is now that person. She has a task, um, which is to find these pieces of Eden and and destroy them. So that, for me, she's not an assassin. Well, I mean, blurry lines maybe. Um... You know, she's not a member of the Brotherhood, let's put it like that, because the Hidden Ones don't exist yet for another 400 years or so. Um, but her task is clear. Her task fits in with the established um, story and, and plot points. What I'll say from a storytelling point of view, and I think we should definitely talk about this, is the ending of this crossover feels like the true ending of Odyssey yeah. the game. Yeah. Um, Sani, do you want to talk us through the ending and how did you feel about it? Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're right. I think the, the, it's it's a perfect ending for Cassandra. We know it's not the end of a story, but the end of her odyssey. Yeah. Um, it, you know, she set this task, uh, which, by the way, I agree with you. I think it fits in nicely. And at the risk of sounding dumb, because I haven't played the Valhalla version yet, I think it also fits on what we know from um, Valhalla's main game ending. On like, why would Alethea want her to go near pieces of Eden? You know, and we know she has, mm. uh, uh, you know, some uh, hidden uh, intentions <laughs> um, and objectives. Um, so. So with the crossover ending, Cassandra is given this task and it's time to say goodbye to the Greek world and to her odyssey and to to explore the world. Um, so she 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 ends and I don't know if you want to talk me to talk about this, but I think it's Herodotus asks asks her where she wants to go next yes. and she says Egypt and he for says, me I know some good stories about Egypt <laughs> yeah yeah and for me that's amazing and then um I'm not going to spoil I don't know if James wants to but oh we're, we're gonna go after so, the I credit mean, we need to go in full spoilers okay so after the credits roll um, can I just say before you before you say yes thing so 
Um, when you finish Odyssey, the main game, even when you do, do the DLCs, there are no credits because it's an mm. open world. So you just yeah. finish the last quest, open map, do what you want. So it is yeah. somewhat unsatisfying. In this story, you have the final conversation between uh, Cassandra and Ivanovas and Herodotus. The camera yeah. pans out, the music plays, it's really moving. You're like, oh shit, this is it. Oh no, there it's are, the there, end. <laughs> there are credits. There are end yes. credits. And, and you've, got the, you've got the original Odyssey song that you first hear in Kefalonia yeah. right at the start. And you're like, oh my God, this was, and it was amazing. And I thought, and I sat there for a few minutes just letting the credits roll, thinking, fucking hell, this is brilliant. Yeah. I let the credits roll, and I let the credits roll, and I thought, right, I, I have some other stuff to do. You know, I've got my, I do have a life as well. I must get on. I can't wait for these these credits to roll forever. I'm really sorry, everyone who was they in the credits long. who I didn't see. <laughs> so I press the button to skip to the credits or close the credits. Take it away, Sammy. Da da! I actually waited for all of them to roll because I was terrified I wouldn't see it because oh, I knew well, there was something well by then. Oh, I did knew you? There was okay. Something. I didn't know what. I had no clue. And it takes you to a scene, but it's not mm-hmm. even the scene. It's the music. Oh, Suddenly Jesus you Christ, have the music. AC Origins soundtrack comes in. And, yes. you know, just talking about this, I'm getting goosebumps. Same. So same Origins again. soundtrack comes in and you see this figure, which we know is Cassandra. You don't see her face, I think. But you no, see you her walk. And she's in the library of Alexandria and she goes and she puts a, a roll of, I don't know, papyrus, but basically the writings of Herodotus, Herodotus on the library in Alexandria. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I teared up and I had goosebumps so all did I. over my body. I feel it right now. Just thinking that. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, same, you're same. Right. You've it was the sound, so you've got exciting. The opening sound of Origins. Yeah. You've got a big wide was... camera shot of the lighthouse, yeah. the Pharos of Alexandria, Alexandria. Yeah. and I was, and I, I, my mouth, my jaw dropped. And I Same. Thought, what the yeah. hell are they doing? Where is this going? And then, yeah. yeah, you've got the Library of Alexandria, where Bayek reunited with Aya in the in the yeah. vaults underneath. Yeah, um, it was beautiful. Yep, it be- Thank you. That is a, that's a, that's the word for it. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely beautiful. So yeah, um, at some point, I guess it's obvious she lived a long time, but she went to Alexandria when the library yeah. was constructed, existing, and uh, she was there. And you know, you have I, I part of me. We'll, we'll come on to this point. You might as well come on to this point now. It's it's a natural time to do it. So when Odyssey had finished, and I had a great time playing it, I spent a year playing and replaying that game, and it was over, and all the post release content was over, and mm. I always thought oh, I'd love more. I want more Cassandra, more story, more Greek stuff. Yeah. Um, and when we got the trailer saying you were scratching that, you are getting more Greek stuff. I was, it was fantastic. They closed the story so beautifully. Absolutely. I feel completely satisfied. I don't need yeah. any more of Cassandra's story in Greece. Um, yeah. I, I may go back and replay Odyssey. I still dip in every now and then and just do a side quest here or there, just because it's fun. Um, but I, I personally don't need any more of Cassandra's time yeah, in Greece because no, they closed it. it so nicely. Beautiful. I'm still yeah, in I two minds do, whether I would want another future crossover of, again, short story, short series in, of, of mm. quests. Do I want a, yeah. a playable Egypt story? Maybe. Mm. Part of me does. And part of me says, actually... The more you reuse Cassandra and, and have tricky. her popping up, yeah, you kind of cheapen. Loses or, or some, you, yeah. Do you know I what agree. I mean? So I'd, I don't know. Although I'd love to see Cassandra in the Amunet, from a, my heart would want it. I'm not sure if it's the right way to use the characters. Yeah, what do you think, Sammy? I agree with you. Did, would uh, you want to see more expansion on that Egyptian scene? Uh, I agree with you because when I heard, even before I saw, I was so I was not expecting that um, post-credit scene. But when she mentions Egypt, I was like, oh, my God, Egypt. She's going to Egypt. And I did have a split second thought. What if they're going to do crossover stories where Cassandra meets everyone <laughs> <laughs> everywhere? And, like, you know, my brain was like, "Whoa, we're going to get more Edward, you know, more Aya. Anyway, so that was a very split second um, <laughs> mm, thought of mm. mine. 
but upon thinking more about it, I agree with you. I think it would lose some of the shine. It would it would yeah. tire it a bit. I mean, it would have to be very well done, especially because um, with with uh, Valhalla, you know, Valhalla is the current game, so it it it's it's easier to fit her there. But how yeah. would you how would you now present a crossover in Egypt or in the other places? And I, uh, not, I, I not don't know. knowing how games are developed because I don't work in game design. Yeah, I, yeah. My, my gut instinct is the further back in time you go, the harder it is to kind of Absolutely. update those yeah. visual assets yeah. and and Graf- audio assets absolutely. and reuse them. Yeah. And yeah. having said that, it still blows my even now it still blows my mind that they took the time to to create and render this cutscene. I know well, I appreciate they have yeah. all the assets in of the Library of Alexandria and they obviously mo capped the actor walking across the stage so they could assemble yeah. Cassandra working walking through this this uh, you know digital version of, of the Library of Alexandria. I get that all these yeah. assets exist, they haven't had to create them from scratch, but they still had to do all the rendering and the editing and yeah. so yeah. it's not a, an insignificant amount of work. But yeah, you, no definitely I, I feel like it would be easier to do sort of crack open Egypt's map and give us a, a little side quest on Alexandria or Memphis or, or whatever. Yeah. Whether I'd want it or not, I don't no. know. I don't know. the other question, it's not, ju- it's not just uh, the games, it's, it's her character, you know. Yeah. Would the stories be very similar? Because after all, she's after these artifacts. And whilst, you know, I would love to see, <laughs> you know, I don't know... Um, I would love to see, I'll tell you what I would love to see. I would love to see a crossover of um, uh, Cassandra looking for the Shroud of Eden and then Edward finds it first because we know the Shroud of Eden oh, that yes. Fry uh, find was found initially by Edward. Oh, of course, would I like to see Edward again in like modern graphics? Yes, please. I mean, a 4K but, Edward. I mean, that, oh, we're going to no. have to turn off. I'd into, die. I'm sorry. Yes, I would <laughs> die. I would die very much. But um, but I think it it could make her more irrelevant. You know, if you see her a lot, especially if it's not well done, which I, I don't know. I, I, I think I would rather not see her like you i know um yeah. yeah i'm not quite sure it's a tricky one because i feel like it it could do more damage than than good yes yeah i'm i'm the same i yeah it's a tricky one isn't it we i felt like as as an odyssey fan i feel like the story's given me closure to the to the story to varnabas's life to herodotus's life um yeah, the more you use Cassandra, the, the more she, the less special she is. Perhaps that's the way of looking at it. Um, and it's best left as is. Um, I don't know, Declan. Yeah. I know you haven't played Odyssey for a while because you've not had access to it. But would you want her to to reappear in crossover stories, or you know, the, the, there's like a, a Black Flag remaster, and as Edward walks across the seafront in Havana, there's a little Cassandra in the background just looking, keeping an eye on stuff. I, I don't know. I think. Uh, what I would say is then, then I don't want. But this is not a criticism of of the crossover story we've created, not at all. Because I think the writing, the dialogue, the quests we were given, like the quest design, were all superb. I think it was so well done. And maybe yeah. talented writers can create more stories like of this quality and this kind of emotional connection for future crossovers. Maybe this is the only crossover we'll ever get. Who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah. but I would say. When those credits rolled, I was happy, and I thought, "Yeah, yeah same, I'm, I'm same, done. same." And then, and then, of course, um, we got that cut, that end, end uh, post credit oh, scene. And I was just, oh, yeah, that God, was yeah. beautiful. That was absolutely yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I mean, the real question, Sammy, is: So, uh, are you planning to play Origins again soon? Did it make you think? Yeah, I could just go back and explore Egypt for a bit. Oh, uh, maybe you know, Origins is the only AC game. Um, mm. not counting the Ezio trilogy, um, well, actually counting the Ezio trilogy, but it's the only AC game from the ones I played that I only played 
once. All the others are repeated at least twice. Same for me. Well, not including Val. Actually, that's not the same for me. I see what you mean now. So you've you've played the whole but, story, but you've never gone back and done it again. No, I've never. And I gotcha. also have not completed everything, and I'm a completionist. I like, you know, there's a little sh- uh, shiny thing on the map. I need to go. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, if I go into the Ys, you know, I'll, I'll be here all night. Uh, if I go into the Y, because I have a lot of, uh, um, I have some feelings about origins. Um, but, but yeah, but yeah, but just, um, it's a beautiful game. And yes, the soundtrack, you know, it just takes you places. Oh, God, yeah. Origin Origins is one I I definitely want. I have started a replay of it. I'm about halfway through, although um, <laughs> I I've I started tried. it I started it in December this time last year, and I, I I played it not not regularly, maybe a couple of times a week, just gradually making my way through through the story. Currently, Bayek is in Memphis, and he's been chilling in Memphis for about three months. <laughs> I, haven't, yeah. I haven't been back in a long time, but I would like to 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 play it through again and. Partly yeah. because I had this feeling when I finished it the first time that although it's a very good game, a very good story, I felt there were some issues with the story. Now, what we know now is that the story got changed you significantly. Know, all in the eye business. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. But I, yeah. I just remember coming away from the game thinking, eh, what? Yeah, <laughs> what did I, I have, miss? I have, um, I, 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 but you see, even when I say I have, issues you know my issues are not really issues are they're just personal preferences i'm not a i'm i'm not a fan of uh, revenge stories no matter gotcha. how <laughs> valid gotcha. they are so so it's not the story doesn't appeal to me personally yeah um yeah. so it's you know then i have other opinions on how um you know the time period and so on um, and they're just that their opinions based on preferences. It, it's, it's, it is an excellent game. It was the first AC game that I completed entirely, so oh, I right. okay. finished. Yeah. Um, I I don't count the half AC two I done years ago. Um, so, and I love it, and I love Egypt. I love ancient Egypt, so I do love it. But but there's issues that um make me struggle to replay it. Basically. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's it. Understood. <laughs> Understood. Um, Declan, did you have any more questions for for Sally and I as the as the two people tonight who've finished the Odyssey story? Um, I don't know, but I did want to put um on the point of crossovers. I personally don't feel that I know she can and she should in transmedia and maybe future games. But I don't think the Clint Center should ever be in any games that have already been released prior to Valhalla. Yeah. And yeah. my logic for that is the pyramid at the very end of the game where um, Pythagoras is shown and the assassins and what they're doing. I have this mental image that she knows time has to work in a certain order. She can't intervene. She knows what the assassin's going to do. She's seen glimpses of it. So in my head, as we didn't see Valhalla then because it wasn't planned, in yeah. my head, I've just got that any games after one to Origins, she will never intervene for them characters because yeah. she knows their lives have got to leave a certain way. She can't get involved. So I think she's just yeah. happy chilling with Val- with uh, Eivor. The bed best friends. <laughs> <laughs> we. I look forward to, I don't know whether we'll be able to do it this week for sort of a New Year's Eve recording or whether we'll do it very early in January, but I look forward to the Valhalla um, conversation, Declan, when you because you're playing Val, you've got Valhalla available, so you're able to finish um, that half of the crossover. I think um, they're going to have that half conversation. I think they're going to have that half finished tomorrow. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm I'm desperate good. to talk about it, but yes, <laughs> I've played two and a half hours of it already. Um, oh, you so must be near the end. Yeah, it's not long, and again, it, 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 the map is small. There's there's some treasure pieces to collect. There's a few world events, but there's not a lot on Sky, which is, suits me fine. I don't need big maps and lots to do. So, yeah, so, I'll be I'll be looking forward to that. So I think that's all we've got time for today. Yeah. Uh, well, unless uh, we should just ask our guest um, if she wants to make any final points as well. Uh, no, no. Um, like I said it's. Uh, I love the crossover. Um, can't wait to play Valhalla. Can't wait to <laughs> uh, talk about it as well. 
Um, I just wanted to say thank you for inviting me to be in the podcast. Oh, um, our pleasure. Yeah, it was lovely. It was lovely. So, um, I hope everyone's enjoyed this, and I can't wait to hear everyone's thoughts on the Odyssey crossover. So, please reach out to us on Twitter at BC Let's Talk and at James T. Flynn. If you have any thoughts and you want to get in touch with me um, through emails instead of Twitter, you can email me at assassinscreed.stalk.gmail.com. Emails are always open, and I'm always interested to hear what you say. So, Thank you again to Sammy for joining, and thank you. I'm excited to talk about the Valhalla one soon. Me too. And to everyone listening to this on Christmas Eve, Merry Christmas! I hope you have a fantastic Yay. day. And in the words of the immortal Jacob Fry, <laughs> "What's this? Is it an assassin Christmas?" Yes, it is. Happy Christmas, everyone. I'll see you all next week. Bye. <laughs>